What I'm going to teach you now is about twin needle stitching. I have a serger that does a cover hem, but I can handle my twin needle on my regular sewing machine much, much quicker and I think more successfully. The game plan for this sweatshirt, and this is the nautical red, which is really a soft pink, is that I have done a crocheted neck with this cotton stripping, which is called rags, and then I ran out of that one, but I have this one, so I'll add some lark's head knots of these colors into this neckline, and then I'll crochet some more strips to go down the front. So this led me into dark purples, and I've got this great, wonderful, big, dark purple button, so that led me to decide to do my twin needle stitching in dark purple. So that's what we're going to accomplish. I've already narrowed in the underarm and decided on my hemline, and I've got this all ready to hem. At this point, what I've done was that I pressed it up, the hem that I wanted, and in doing that, I clipped the seam allowance, pressing the garment seam allowance to the back, the hem seam allowance to the front, and I fused on fusible bias tape right where I'm going to be stitching, on the hem allowance, not on the garment body side, but on the hem allowance. Now, to thread the machine, what I love to use are the 4.0 slash 75 stretch twin needles from Schmetz. And I have my machine all threaded up with that, but let me give you some hints. If you look up here, you'll see if you pull the threads that I've got both of them riding horizontal, if that's possible on your machine. Either both horizontal or both vertical is preferable. And I've used the same spool catcher on each one. I have found that that's really important. If I don't have two spools of thread, then I'm going to wind two bobbins and use two bobbins. But my experience tells me that you want to use the same container for your thread and the same spool catcher so that it comes off in the same way. And that you want the thread unwinding off of each in opposition. So as I pull this thread, it winds to the front. And if I pull this thread, it winds to the back. I've determined on my machine that when I come to the tension disc, I put one thread on one side of the tension disc and the other thread on the opposite side of the tension disc. You have to experiment with this. Sometimes it'll be better if you put both threads on either one side or the other. And I know on some machines you can't even see the tension disc, so then it's not even an option. But nonetheless, for me, the thread that went on the left side of the tension disc then comes down and goes through the left needle. The one on the right side of the tension disc comes down and goes through the right needle. I've set my machine on a straight stitch, and it's a little bit longer than normal, at 4.0 long. And then the other thing that I recommend that you do is lower your machine tension. I've done the fronts already. And then one more hint here is that you can get out your quilt guide, which usually hides in most machine accessory boxes and is rarely used. I've already figured out that I know I want to guide the edge right there at the two and a half. That was a meow. I have kitties that help me all the time. All right, so I'm going to start right here. I've also found that going backwards is not a good thing to do with twin needles. So. My eye is over here, guiding my fabric right snug next up to that quilting guide. So let's just pretend, pretend that I've gone the whole way. So I'm almost all the way around. And also remember, you always have horizontals or hems press up first, and then verticals, this is the center front, press around after that. So it always finishes this way. With sweatshirting too, you really need to grade and trim back seams as much as possible. So here I'm at the end, and I'm going to leave nice long threads. I love these Japanese snips. One piece of forged steel, nothing's better than them. And then at the end, you're going to pull those threads to the back. And I don't like to knot. Instead, what I do is um, thread them on a needle and then bury that thread. So I'll do that later. That's TV work to me. Then. I take my applique scissors, these duckbill applique scissors, and what I'm going to do is trim close. And the beauty of this is that because that's shaped that way, it's less likely, I'm not promising, it's less likely to cut into the garment fabric. 
so you can see here as I do this that part of that bias tape is being cut off now but it's not going to show because it's on the hem allowance instead of the garment. I can trim that. I just didn't have my scissors. So that makes a nice finished stretchy commercial looking hem on your sweatshirts.